and, and our trainers, there is grants for, for capital expenditure as well. So, um, but it's mainly for that SME business. And what about sole traders? Yeah, sole traders can access. Um, they've got to be, um, so, so for example, for, 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 um, for training grants, as long as they can reference the HMRC reference number, then um, they can access grants for purely for one-to-one -one and mentoring and training for themselves. It all differs. It all depends on the funding scheme. What's right for one funding scheme is different for another funding scheme. So when a sole trader is potentially looking at um, getting grants, then speaking to businesses or speaking to us, we'd be able to go through the fine print to say, yes, this funding scheme is relevant, this one potentially not. There is always a solution. So we, we would always work out some form of solution for, for whoever inquires to us. There is potential caps on sole traders if you're going to if you're looking at training expenditure. So there's only one person that they can train. So there'll be a certain you know price per head, so to speak, on training uh, on training caps. But long story short, there's always a solution. Um, and, and by speaking to us, we will be able to work something out for them. Exactly, and that's the point. You know, they speak to us, and we can take that that worry away from them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Dom, so we, we've talked quite a lot about funding and, and what we do around there then. So um, for anybody watching, have you got an example of a business that probably wouldn't have been able to secure the support that uh, that they did without having funding and uh, and how, how we did that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we come across it quite often. Um, I think we've alluded to, the, to it earlier that actually quite a lot of the interventions that we deliver wouldn't go ahead if we wouldn't have secured funding, which is we, 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 why we put such a big emphasis on it. The one that springs to mind are long-term clients of ours based over in Doncaster. We uh, heavily integrated in um, to their system, into their business delivering um, ISO 9001, ISO 45001, so quality and environmental. The nature of their business, they have a lot of contractors that work on building sites. So health and safety is a massive um, issue for them, potentially, if they don't have all the safe systems of, uh, of work in place, which they do. They're just not certified to a, uh, an international standard. So on the review meeting that I had with, uh, with that organization, they then said, actually, what about 45,001? We, we run an integrated system. So... It's easy to bolt on um, with, with the way the international standards of, um, of systems are set up. But without securing the funding, they already had quite a lot of outgoings with us in terms of, um, in terms of expenditure. So actually bolting on a new system was just going to be additional cash. So in their, their director's mind was, well, actually, if we're paying for it, if we can get funding towards it, then effectively we've got it for free because we can, um, they, were going to, they were paying for the service anyway we can bolt on some more costs to integrate a 45,001 system, but then they get 50% funding towards it through one of the local councils. So why wouldn't they go for it? Um, ultimately, put in an application, went to panel, authorised last week, actually. So we're now building that system up for them. And actually, the benefits for them are then some of their supply chain and contractors are saying we can't give you we can't get you out to work on you know new build sites we can't get you out on some of our building sites without you having this health and safety um, system in place that's certified to prove your credibility so that's going to open up ridiculous amounts of work for them now because they've all of a sudden got a new channel to get working and that's what we evidenced in the application. It was, yes, we're going to get 50% funding towards this um, project. But actually, what is this going to do to our, us as an organization? What doors is it going to open? How many more people are we going to have to recruit because of the additional work? And it's just doing that circular economy and bringing it back around to say, this is what we're going to invest in your business 50% uh, um, funding for. But actually, what's our investment going to do for the, for the local um, economy? And we could, we could literally evidence so much stuff because it was really going to have a massive benefit. And I can't wait to see it actually roll out because now we've got it. It's about delivering that intervention and, and doing what we said we were going to do. So I'm looking forward to tracking it. Yeah, great. And that's an ideal example of that's not just having a positive effect on that business, it's having a knock-on effect to the economy and yeah. everything else as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great example. Cheers.
Thank you for watching and listening to Biz15, the Yorkshire Business Podcast, facilitated by me, Don Brook, owner and director of Brook Corporate Developments. To watch back, please log on to our website, which is brookconsult.co.uk slash biz15, and hopefully we will see you on future episodes. Mm-hmm.